This lecture is about measurement and metric units. The base units for the metric system are shown here. We, in this class, will not be working with the last two, electric current and uh, luminescence, but the rest of them you should be familiar with. Um, it was a surprise to me, and I think it is a lot to people, that the base unit for mass is kilogram instead of gram, but um, it is. Okay, I want you to know have these prefixes for the metric system committed to memory. They are very common, commonly used ones, um, and be able to write out the equivalent. So, for example, one nanogram or nanometer equals one times 10 to the minus ninth meter, okay? So you're going to need them for doing unit conversion, so I want you to go ahead and memorize these. If it's easy for you, easier for you, you can think of these as having a one in front of them. So one nanometer equals one times 10 to the minus nine meters. One micro, we'll say gram this time, equals one times 10 to the minus six gram. Okay, so those are your conversion factors that I'd like you to memorize. I think you're familiar with all this. Roughly how big a, a meter stick is, a little bit larger than a yardstick. Um, the largest divisions in a meter stick are centimeters, and then the teeny tiny little ones are millimeters. So the measure of mass is kilogram. I think you probably know by now that mass is not the same thing as weight. Weight takes into account the strength of the gravitational force. Time, typically it's second when we're talking about time in science. And Kelvin, we'll be using Celsius, but the official SI unit for temperature is Kelvin. Um, just to take a moment to talk to you about um, what temperature represents. Temperature is a measure of kinetic energy, okay? So literally, the more movement there is in a sample, the higher the temperature will be, or vice versa. And so that's the most valuable information we get from measuring temperatures, get an idea of the kinetic energy of a system. I will want you to be familiar with um, both the Kelvin and the Celsius scale. We're not going to worry about Fahrenheit. It's just not used by scientists. I think if you can remember the equivalency at the boiling point of water, you'll remember the conversion. So Kelvin is always 200, a unit of 200 higher than Celsius. So you take whatever the Celsius is, well, not 200, 273, sorry. Take whatever the Celsius temperature is and you add to it 273. I don't really care if you add the 0.15 on. There are no negative Kelvin values, okay? Zero Kelvin is the absolute lowest theoretical temperature that is possible. That's not even possible, but um, there are negative Celsius values. So just remember the Kelvin value will always be larger than the Celsius. Derived units, what are those? Those are units that are made up of two or more other units, okay? So density, the units for density, for example, are typically grams per milliliter. So density is made up of grams and milliliters, two different units, so density is a derived unit. Volume is two, and you might say, wait a minute, volume is liters, that's only one unit. But if you really think what volume is, it's a 3D value, so if you think about the volume of a box. Oh man, I can't draw. For example, um, it's length times width times height, okay? So um, centimeters cubed or meters cubed, those are also volumes. So volume is definitely a derived unit. Density is especially important to chemists. So again, the most common time units that you'll see a gram per milliliter so density is basically mass divided by volume. Um, something really important, and I'll say it over and over and over in this class, but one milliliter is absolutely identical to one cubic centimeter. They are one in the same. You need to remember that or you'll get thrown, thrown off course in this, in this class. 
Um, okay, so and density is especially important. Um, it determines whether an object will sink or float. You should also have committed to memory that the density of water is exactly 1.0. That is by definition, and everything else tends to be compared to water. So if something floats on water, that means its density is less than 1. That is it for measurements and units, and um, I separated out uh, the lecture on density, which should come next.